So, how do I go from this to this? So this is the interview setup that I like to use. I'll talk you through all of the lights, sound, camera angles, etc. in a few minutes. But first, how do I get all of this kit into just three bags and make it extra portable? Let's have a look. Okay, so let's open up the first flight case. This is what I keep all of my lights and a few extra bits in. So let me talk you through how I pack this. Opening it up, obviously a lot of the kit is in use at the moment, but I've put all the bags here so that you can get an idea of what goes where. So here is my travel tripod. Nice, small, light, but really sturdy. Packs up, fits on top of everything else, lovely. I'll take that out, then you can see basically here are my four main lights. Along here you've got the Godox SL60W in its bag where I keep all of the accessories in it as well. At the bottom here, this case is my Swift 2620 with all the accessories including gels. Here is my Niwa Bicolor LED panel with all the accessories, again including the gels. Here is the Aperture Amaran with all the accessories. And here is a little bag that I keep my batteries for my camera in. And even with the tripod on top, when I shut it, I still have room on top here for my gimbal for when I'm getting B-roll. So that's how I pack this bag. Let's move on to my backpack, which has my cameras in it. This is my backpack that I use. It's actually the backpack that I got for my motorized slider, which is the iFootage Shark Mini. But this backpack is just the right size for everything that I need to do with it. So let's have a look inside. So obviously this space here is for my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, but I'm using that to film this, so it can't go in there. So that's where that goes. This is my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K with the Sigma 18 to 35 lens attached. Yes, for low budget stuff, I travel with my lens attached, sue me. Here is the Sigma Art 50 to 100. In this section, I've got my Rode mic, I've got my Rode Wireless Go lapel mics, I've got an XLR cable, and then in this section I've got my Edge power base, which is an extra battery, which just slides in there, and normally I have a bit of cloth just separating them, but I cleaned my lens with it earlier, and uh, it's over there. Here is all bits for your normal accessories, like batteries and cards and lens cloths. You've also got space for a laptop to go in there, and underneath you've got another pocket for extra bits. And then there's this bag, which I use for all my lighting stands. Now, obviously most of them are in use, but hopefully this will give you the idea. So basically you open it up, I can fit three lighting stands in there and uh, a boom arm. So I have three lighting stands, a separate boom arm that goes on top of one of them. And then on the outside, I can strap to the outside my telescopic boom arm that I use for my Godox SL60W. And that basically means that I have one suitcase, one backpack, and this bag with my lights in it. And that's everything that I take for a lower budget shoot for interviews and B-roll. Basically, for my lower budget stuff, I try and travel light, I try to keep it portable, I try not to drive because of lowering carbon footprint, etc. So I try and make my kit as portable and compact as I can, and generally, I get the train. A lot of the time, clients are actually very impressed when I turn up with what looks like not a lot of stuff, and then you manage to set it all up, and it looks pretty impressive, but at the same time, it isn't overwhelming, so it's not a huge amount of kit, but it is more than enough to get a good result, I found. So the interview shot. First thing to say is that normally the person being interviewed wouldn't be looking straight into camera unless that's been specified in the brief. Normally they would be looking just off camera talking to someone. So this is more like what you would see in the final shot. Now, my main light that I have here, this is the Godox SL60W, which for my low budget stuff is absolutely fantastic. It creates a really nice light. I've got the Godox Octobox on it. For the low budget stuff, I really like the light that this produces. I normally have it on a telescopic C stand so that it can come slightly above the subject at an angle so you get this sort of nice half light here. So the main light is here so it stays always on the interviewer's side so that you get a bit of molding coming from this side and it just gives the shot a bit of depth when you look at it like this. Behind me here on my left, your right, I've got a slightly harder light with blue gels on it. That is my Swift 2620 Flexi Light 
and I like that it just gives a bit of definition here. I've put blue gels on it just to give it a bit of colour contrast. I wouldn't always use blue gels on it, it would depend on the subject, but for this setup, I like that because on the background, on my right, on your left here, just out of focus, I've got something of interest. So what I like to do is look around the room, find something that is relevant to the subject matter, relevant to the interviewee, and have it in the background so that it just gives a bit of context. So here you can see I've got my Terminator and Robocop figures because they're relevant to me. I've lit them with a red because I think the red complements really well with the blue, just gives it a nice bit of colour contrast. Just off to my left here, I've got a blue light, which is just a Niwa bicolor LED panel, and I've lit it blue uh, just to give the background a bit more of that blue, so that this whole area behind me here is blue, and this whole area is red. Again, I think that just makes it slightly more interesting and gives it a bit of color contrast. Up in front of me here is the boom mic, which is my Rode NTG2. That's on a boom arm, on a light stand, just out of shot above me here, pointing down here at my chest so that you can get the best quality audio. I've also got a lav mic for backup sound because you never know what might go wrong. Always good to have backups. So generally I would use the boom sound, but if there's something wrong with the boom sound, you've got this to fall back on. So generally when I want an interview to look something like this, I put the camera just off to the person's left. So it's it's not directly in front of them, which would be there, but it's just off over here so that it gives it a bit of depth. You're not looking straight at the person's face. It's a bit more of an angle and it's a bit more interesting. And then you have the interviewer sitting as close to the camera at eye height. So the camera's at eye height. The interviewer would be at eye height. So that basically, if I'm looking at eye height here, that should look pretty normal. But if the person was standing up, that might look a bit weird if I'm doing my interview like this. Or if the person's crouched down there and I'm doing my interview like this. But at eye height, that seems to work much, much better. I generally try and get the interview subject on the third on the grids. So you've got the grid and I should be on one of the thirds. Sometimes, depending on the subject matter, if it's a different brief, you can frame it differently. But this is quite a traditional way of framing an interview shot. If I'm shooting several interviews, I might mix it up so that some are on the left of screen and some are on the right of screen, just because then that makes it more interesting in the edit. One of the reasons I like to keep my kit as small and portable as possible is because sometimes when you turn up with masses and masses of stuff, it can put people off. Some people get very nervous in front of camera, so sometimes when you turn up with loads of kit and have done a massive setup and there's loads of cameras and lights everywhere, it can freak people out a little bit. This is a relatively minimal setup, but I found it gets good results for me and it makes people feel at ease. That is one of the most important things about doing a good interview, is helping people feel at ease, connecting with them, making sure that you get along and that they are feeling comfortable before they go in front of the camera. One of the most important elements of a good interview. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you've got any questions about my kit or how I set all of this up or how I carry it, then please feel free to drop me a line in the comments. If you like this video, then awesome. Please do give me a like and a subscribe and I'll hope to see you in the next one. Peace.